I'm attempting to build a 20-0 NFL team in Madden 24. We will be building our roster by spinning this wheel of all 32 teams. I'll be selecting a player or position group from each team it lands on until we've completed our roster. We will also have a chance to steal one offensive and one defensive player every week by beating our opponents during the season, which will hopefully get us enough talent to become undefeated Super Bowl champions. It's time to begin building our roster with our first spin on the wheel. Who will be the first player or position group to join the squad? and oh man, we landed on the Niners. I gotta go with their D-line. Nick Bosa is a savage. There's so much talent on that Niners team, but you know what they say, defense wins championships as our second spin is now coming to a stop on the Packers. I gotta take Jair Alexander for sure. After just two spins, the star power on our defense is already looking crazy as next up, we're landing on them Washington Commanders. Yo, I gotta take that dude, Scary Terry. Now the offense is getting some love, which is a great thing to see as our next spin on the wheel is landing on them Purple People Eaters. The Vikings, we gotta get Gritty Boy on the squad, Justin Jefferson. I wanna point out that the order of the players you see on my lineup sheet won't be how they're ordered in the depth chart. Just wanted to clarify that as the wheel now stops on the Cardinals, I gotta take my guy, Buda Baker. I'm actually really excited right now, guys. We're filling in the team accordingly. The wheel is spinning in our favor. Now landing on America's team, the Cowboys. Yo, I gotta take their linebackers. Bro, we are gonna have a historical pass rush with Bosa and Parsons now. I just know every offensive line is gonna hate going again us and now we will be taking a player from the Falcons yo it's gotta be Kyle Pitts I feel like I've been making all the right picks so far both sides of the ball are looking tough and we still have a lot of key positions we need to fill and now we just landed on the Bengals you know what I'm bringing the other gritty boy to the squad give me Jamar Chase I know some of you might be losing your mind that I didn't take Joe Shiesty but with the teams that are left there are a ton of elite quarterbacks remaining as we now land on the Lions yo give me that dude Amon Ra as our final receiver without question we have the best wide receiver room in the league and I'm I'm so happy about whatever QB we go with. He will for sure be the favorite to win MVP. As we now have landed on the Browns, I gotta go with Nick Chubb. We really have a goaded running back, a goaded wide receiver core, and a freak athlete at tight end. This is insane, fellas, and it looks like it's about to get even crazier as we will be taking Sauce Gardner from the Jets. Since we're almost done filling out our roster, we do have to be mindful of these last few wheel spins coming up. As we now have landed on the Saints, I'm gonna continue to add to the secondary with Marshawn Lattimore. I'm really just waiting for one of the teams with an elite quarterback to pop up on the wheel, but we are getting down to the wire with the amount of spins we have left as we now land on Broncos country. I'm going with PS2 as our final cornerback. I didn't feel like letting Russ cook for this team. I'm still holding out on picking a QB as the next team we'll be choosing from is the Titans. You know we gotta take King Henry. We really got a backfield with Nick Chubb and Derrick Henry. There is no way any team is gonna slow us down in the slightest. And next up, we will be taking from the Dolphins. Give me your O-line. Obviously, if we had any spots left at wide receiver, we would have went with Tyree Kill. But hey, I'll take their O-line as next up. We'll be taking from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, so I'll add Antoine Winfield as our free safety. I'm actually getting kind of nervous because we still don't have a QB, and we are down to our final three spins, so we absolutely have to clutch up, and okay, we landed on the Giants. I'm gonna take their special teams. Final two spins for a quarterback and second tight end. Please let me cook up something crazy with this spin, please, please. Oh my goodness, we landed on them Eagles. We gotta go with Jalen Hurts. Here it is, guys, the final spin. This is awesome. We have got to be at least a 90 overall. I might even be low ball on it as the final team we land on is the Steelers. Hey, we got Pat Fryermuth. Let's go. Our team rounded out to be a 91 overall. The offense itself was actually a 91 overall, and we have some of the best skill position players in the entire NFL on this team. It's going to be tough to slow us down. While our defense comes in at a 93 overall, and I can confidently say our pass rush might go down in NFL history as one of the greatest ever. It's now time to embark on our journey to go 20 and 0 as our first opponent of the year is the New England Patriots. I will be super simple each regular season game, showing only the highlight plays in the Simcast, and the patch jumped out early with a Chad Ryland field goal. To start the second quarter, we captured the lead with a Derrick Henry touchdown, but funny enough, we missed our first extra point of the year. Gano bounced back, though, with two field goals to put us up by nine at halftime. But after this touchdown midway through the third quarter by Jamar Chase, we dominated the rest of the game, scoring 26 unanswered points, locking us in for the first win of the year in a blowout. We stole Mike Nwenwu for the offensive line and Matthew Judon for our defense. This helped us jump up to a 93 overall team that's a huge boost right out of the gate we now find ourselves against the vikings in week two and i know they're mad we stole jettas jack podlesny put the vikes on the board first with a field goal then kyle pitts barged onto the scene with a touchdown to give us the lead and jair came back with a quick turnover on the next drive leading to jamar chase doing the honors of scoring our second td of the game and jack podlesny was the only guy on minnesota scoring today knocking through his second field goal at the end of the first half which would then lead to a three touchdown run for our eagles resulting in our guys 
kneeling the game out after a few garbage time Vikings touchdowns, improving our record to 2-0. We further improved our O-line with Brian O'Neill and added to our secondary with Harrison Smith. After two games, we were already at 95 overall. Things are heating up faster than I thought. It's now time to venture down to Tampa Bay to play Baker and his Buccaneers. And the Bucs started cooking early with a Rashad White touchdown. Jamar Chase wanted all the smoke, though, tying the game up at the end of the first quarter. And then we put up 10 more points in the second quarter to give us a two-possession lead at halftime. Nick Chubb kept things rolling for us in the third quarter with another touchdown, while Mike Evans tried to bring the Bucs back in the game with a touchdown right as the fourth quarter started. But after another Chubb touchdown and Gano field goal, this game was all but over as we cruised to a record of 3-0. I took Big Mike to add to our receiver room and Vita Vea for our D-line. We didn't increase in overall this week, but the talent on the roster sure did. Our first divisional game of the year comes against the Commanders, who definitely are pretty mad we stole Scary Terry from them. This game had a slow start, but Chubb got us into the end zone early in the second quarter. Only for Jalen Hurts to get busy with under a minute left to go in the half, putting us up by 14, but a Trey Wolf field goal chipped into our lead as time expired in the second quarter. However, chipping into our lead wouldn't matter too much as we went on to outscore the Commanders 21-7 in the second half, giving us our fourth win of the season. We already had the Commanders best player on offense, so I took their punter and then Jonathan Allen as another upgrade for our D-line. I feel like we are just a few upgrades away from possibly seeing the squad jump up to a 99 overall. It's time to fly out to the West Coast for our fifth game here against the Rams. And Cooper Cup was ready to play spoiler on our season with a 75-yard score on the first play. King Henry had our back though with a three-yard scamper into the end zone along with Graham Gano knocking through a field goal to give us the lead at halftime. Jamar Chase got things rolling in the third quarter, extending our lead to 10 points. But this dude Cooper Cup was causing havoc to our secondary, finding the end zone yet again. Gano banged through another field goal and PS2 had a clutch pick six late in the fourth quarter, which led us to be able to knee out the game after a garbage time Rams touchdown, moving us to 5-0 on the year. The two players we were stealing were, of course, Cooper Cup for the offense and that guy Aaron Donald for the defense. I'm actually really surprised that the overall of our team didn't go up, but hey, there's a lot more games left to play. This is a matchup I'm super excited for. We're going against Rodgers and the Jets. After being held to no points in the first quarter, we managed to take a 10-0 lead at halftime. Then we got one of our hogs on the O-line involved with the scoring to extend our lead. But A-Rod is a bad man, and he linked up with Miko Hardman for a one-yard score. And with a Greg Zerline field goal almost halfway through the fourth quarter, it was a one-score game again. Thankfully, King Henry was ready to put the game on ice with under a minute to go to help wrap up our sixth win of the season. I got more depth for the O-line with Locke and Tomlinson and secured CJ Mosley for our front seven. And these upgrades were super clutch as we now are up to a 96 overall with all the momentum in the world. I think you guys already know who I'm stealing from the Dolphins if we can catch this dub. A field goal halfway through the first put the Dolphins on top, but have no fear, Jalen Hurts is here calling his own number for six, followed by a Graham Gano field goal to put us up by seven. Jeff Wilson punched it into the end zone to knock things up for Miami, but Hurts was dialed scoring another rushing TD. Jason Sanders went ahead and knocked through another field goal to cut our lead down to four at halftime, but it wouldn't matter because this team is built for the second half as we went on to outscore Miami 27 to seven, bringing us our seventh victory of the year. And just like that, we got our guy Cheetah for the offense and on defense, we went with Javon Holland and these upgrades helped our team get to a 97 overall. I am absolutely loving it. It's time for our first divisional rematch of the year against the Commanders. And this was the first game where it was over before the second half even begun as we outscored Washington 31 to 7 in the first half. After two more touchdowns for the squad in the second half, the commanders found some garbage points, but ultimately we came out on top to improve the 8-0. Since I love Brian Robinson's story, I added him to our offense and then scooped up Chase Young for our defense. We stayed put at a 97 overall as we just added some depth guys, but I know we'll be a 99 overall soon enough. Boy, oh boy, them Cowboys are 6-1. Are they about to give us a run for our money? Brandon Aubrey started things off with a field goal, but Pat Fryermuth got busy and scored to give us the lead. Aubrey then knocked through another Dallas field goal, but I guess our tight ends were feeling it today as Kyle Pitts found Pater. We couldn't quite pull away from the Cowboys though as Brandon Cooks cut our lead down to just one point, but with five seconds left to go in the first half, Kyle Pitts clutched up for us and scored his second touchdown of the game. Halfway through the third quarter, Nick Chubb put us up by two scores after barreling into the end zone, but the Cowboys weren't going away as Brandon Aubrey knocked through his third field goal. However, with just four minutes left to play in the game, Nick Chubb delivered the dagger touchdown that gave us win number nine on the year. We got a huge upgrade to our O-line with Zach Martin, and on defense, we added Gilly Lock to the secondary. This got us up to a 98 overall. This team is too lit right now. This bye week couldn't have come at a better time because our 10th game of the season is a Super Bowl rematch against the Chiefs. Things got rolling early for us as Nick Chubb pounded his way into the end zone twice, but that lit the fire under Mahomes, who linked with Kadarius Tony for a huge touchdown. Right after the two-minute warning, Jalen called his own number and got a touchdown of his own to put us up by two scores at half. 
Midway through the third quarter, Graham Gano knocked down a field goal, but Mahomes magic cooked with ease, connecting with Richie James to make the game competitive once again. King Henry then put all the pressure back onto Mahomes, and then Mahomes did his thing connecting with Travis Kelsey to keep things interesting, but after a series of knees by our guy Jalen Hurts, this game was wrapped up and we were now 10-0. I had to get the best tight end in football on the squad and wanted to get Chris Jones for the trenches, and those wound up being perfect upgrades as we were now a 99 overall. While this could be crazy, we are going up against the 10-win Buffalo Bills. Gotta love when the game starts off with a Nick Chubb touchdown, but the cover athlete Josh Allen linked with Dawson Knox early in the second to tie the game. Cooper Cup got busy right before the two-minute warning to help us recapture the lead, and Hurts helped pour it on with a rushing touchdown as the second quarter was coming to a close, only for Tyler Bass to knock through a field goal with just two seconds remaining in the half. Surprised to see Jarvis Landry scoring a touchdown on the Bills, maybe Madden predicted his new home, but that TD was quickly forgotten after Travis Kelsey put the cherry on top of this game, helping wrap things up to secure our 11th win. I took Stephon Diggs for our already insane receiving core and added Micah Hyde to our secondary, and I'm pretty sure if we could hit a 100 overall, I think this team would actually be able to do it. I'm looking forward to this matchup against the Niners. They have some insane players we could steal, and this game couldn't have started off more perfect. We outscored San Francisco 28-3 to in the first half, and the domination continued as the second half went on as we left the 49ers in the dust, giving us our 12th win of the season. It was easy to add Trent Williams to our O-line and Fred Warner to our linebacker room. I said it before and I'll say it again, this team could really be a one 100 overall. Time to duke it out with Dallas again. We were able to jump out to a 10-0 lead right before the two-minute warning, but that dude Tony P went crazy on us for a 54-yard touchdown just a few seconds later. And Jettis took that personally, going for six just as the first half was coming to a close. Kelsey scored the lone touchdown in the third quarter, and after swapping some touchdowns in the fourth, the Cowboys simply couldn't keep up, and we were now 13-0. I took Tony P from them this time for our offense, as well as Trayvon Diggs for our defense, and for the first time, I'm really feeling like we actually have a chance to go undefeated. Job isn't finished though, we are headed to one of the hardest sports stadiums to play in as we are taking on the Seahawks. And fellas, I cannot believe I get to say this, but this was the definition of a one-sided affair. The Seahawks did not score a single point on us, and in epic fashion, we were now 14-0. Even though we don't need them, I had to get DK for the offense, and I also snagged Bobby Wagner for our front seven. Are we going to be able to just shut out every team we play from now on? Let me not get ahead of myself, though. We're going up against the G-Men, and they're always scrappy. Luckily for us, though, we have Nick Chubb, who loves starting the game off with touchdowns, and that kind kind of helped the steamroll through the entire first half as we were up 27 to 6. With no action from either team in the third quarter, we were able to close the game out in the fourth and we were now stress-free at 15 and 0. I added Saquon to the backfield and Dexter Lawrence to our D-line, which is just making this team even more unfair to play against. Now we're playing the Cardinals. Imagine if this is the team that finally stops us. Surprisingly enough, they started off the game scoring the first points, but that was it for them because for the rest of the game, we outscored them by a light 38, which secured our 16th win on the year. I took Hollywood Brown because I love his nickname and Isaiah Simmons for our defense. This team is now one win away from a perfect regular season record. And our final game of the year is a rematch against the G-Men. Nick Chubb did his thing as usual, starting things off with a touchdown, but Ty Johnson was quick to rebuttal with one of his own to tie things up, which led to us dropping 26 unanswered points before a final garbage time Giants touchdown, wrapping this game up, making us undefeated through the regular season. Our final steals on both sides of the ball are Darren Waller and Adoree Jackson. And this team is now just three wins away from the undefeated Super Bowl champions. Before we jump into the playoffs, we have to peep the stats from this insane season. Hertz casually had the greatest touchdown to interception ratio of all time at 38 to 1. Nick Chubb was truly the heart and soul of this offense with almost 1,800 yards and 13 touchdowns on the ground. Cup was our overall best wide receiver, but among the players we started with, Jed has led the pack. Fred Warner led the team in tackles, but out of the players we started with, the nod goes to Buda Baker in this category. Donald led the team in sacks, but out of the initial starters, Bosa got the nod here, while Jair Alexander was the takeaway king with six interceptions. So the Madden cover athlete just snubbed Jalen Hurts of MVP? Okay, we'll remember that. At least they hooked your boy up with coach of the year, though. With a loaded playoff bracket on both sides, this bye week is exactly what we need to prepare for our divisional round matchup. Our divisional round opponent is Bryce Young and the Panthers. This is something I'm so excited for. We got Bryce Young going head-to-head -head with Jalen Hurts here in the first round of the playoffs. I'm gonna be super simming till there's something cool we can watch. We jumped out to an early lead with a Graham Gano field goal. And to start the second quarter off, we get to see Bryce Young down inside the 10-yard line on third and four. He's dropping back, and he sailed it. And after this Panthers field goal, it's a tie game. We knocked down another field goal, but man, this Panthers defense is tough. With just over a minute to go here in the first half, we finally get to see our Eagles on offense in a goal-to-go -go situation. Jalen Hurts empties out the backfield, and it's a quick throw to a wide-open Saquon Barkley with a play. But this dude, Bryce, was dialed in. He linked up with 
Jonathan Mingo on a 15-yard touchdown right before the half ended. Looking to reapply some pressure, here is Jalen Hurts, third and goal from the six-yard line. He is firing, and he finds Travis Kelsey to give us a two-possession lead. But this Panthers field goal made it a one-score ball game yet again. And after some terrible clock management by the rookie quarterback, our Eagles are advancing to the championship round. It is a battle of the birds in the NFC championship. We're going up against the Falcons. In the divisional round, we went up against Bryce Young, and now we're going up against Desmond Ritter and Bijan Robinson. This is going to be insane. I'm going to be super simming till there's something cool we can watch. Didn't take too long for our guys to get busy. Here is a simple give to Nick Chubb, and he's in the end zone. The Falcons responded with a nice young way coup field goal. Looking to put up another first half touchdown here is Jalen Hurts working out of the shotgun from the five yard line, and he links up with the cheetah. That is Tyreek Hill. Jair just came up clutch with an interception right before halftime, and we were able to cash in on a field goal to extend our lead. We are raining down so hard on the Falcons right here. First and goal from the four. It's a fullback dive. The Fryer move and move is in the end zone. I'm afraid to say it, Falcons fans, but a touchdown right here. If the game wasn't already over, it will be over. Yup, that is going to do it. We're going to the Super Bowl. The final team standing in our way from the 20-0 undefeated season is Justin Herbert's Chargers. No pun intended, but this game is going to be electrifying. I'm jumping right into Super Simming till there's something cool we can watch. This dude, Nick Chubb, stays making plays. We start the game off with a 69-yard touchdown. We're now halfway through the first quarter, and here is a look at Justin Herbert. First and goal from the three-yard line from the shotgun. Quick slant to Mike Williams. Tie ball game still with just a minute to play here in the first half. Justin Herbert got his Chargers back down inside of the 10-yard line, and he is finding Mike Will made it again for the lead. Luckily for us, Jalen was able to get the guys back down inside of field goal range. We're playing it safe, taking three right here, and it's a four-point ball game going into halftime. Here is some red zone action from our Eagles. Finally, third and goal from the seven. That is a wow! That was thrown on a rope to Jay Jettas. What a play! This is easily one of the best Madden Super Bowls I've ever watched. Here is Justin Herbert now responding back to the Eagles with a quick pass to Keenan Allen who finds the end zone. Lightning might not strike twice, but this dude Nick Chubb scoring two 60-yard touchdowns did in the Super Bowl at that. But this Cameron Dicker field goal tied the game up again. Say it ain't so. Saquon Barkley just went 70 yards to the crib to give us a 31 to 24 point lead. You couldn't ask for a better finish. Here is Justin Herbert on what should be the final play of the game. Dropping back and firing. And there's a flag. Oh my goodness, Eagles fans. You guys have been through this so many times, it feels like pass interference on the Eagles. No way. There's actually no way this is happening right now. There's no way. First thing goal out from the one. Final play of the game for sure. Herbert tries to take off, but he's sacked by Aaron Donald, and that's going to do it. We are undefeated Super Bowl champions. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I need to know, who do you think was the MVP of the team? Let me know down below in the comments, and if you want to see more great content, you can click right here.